He has broken the record for most race wins in a single season. Shane Van Gisbergen is at the top of the tree. He has looked unbeatable. Right in behind, the interesting one is Cam Waters is qualified in third, so it's going to be on. I can't wait. What have we learned about Cameron Waters' pace so far today? We know he is desperate to put a Mustang on the podium. How does he get the job done this afternoon? Well, he was the fastest yesterday. He did the fastest time yesterday. He also did the fastest time in the race yesterday. He did a really good job in the previous race that we saw earlier today. And from this position, it's the best chance all weekend for him to challenge these Coke Camaros. So the other bloke also is Brock Feeney. And he went very well. He was back at sixth and ended up getting to the lead. So there's going to be a lot of strategy and a lot play out, Jess. Absolutely. Brock Feeney out of six on the grid this afternoon, looking to add to his Sunday trophies. That's been his calling card so far in season 2023. Now, we did see a little bit of friendly fire between the Coke Camaros in that earlier race today, <laughs> and they behaved. They didn't come together. Are you expecting to see more of the same this afternoon? And what does it take to make sure that they keep it clean? Well, they did a really good job at the first corner. In fact, the two of them worked together to push Brock Feeney wide. The other part was that Will Brown was trying to negotiate on a pass to get by Brody Kostecki with Barry Ryan and the team, and that didn't happen. They're getting on really well. They're going so well this year so far. But there will be a time when teammates <laughs> don't get on that well, Jess. And who knows, it might be this afternoon. Oh, well, the team boss, Barry Ryan, I saw him standing behind us. It was a big thumbs up. He's hoping it is not this <laughs> afternoon. They want to have both of those cars on the podium here. Well, let's catch up with our pole sitter. He's standing by for us with Rihanna. Thanks, Jess. Brady Kostecki, pole position once again here in Tasmania. It's been an incredible weekend so far for yourself and for the team. Didn't quite get it done in the previous one, but, I mean, what is the mindset? Take us into your headspace right now about just capitalising on this arm roll pole position. Yeah, just going to get a good start here and uh, obviously having Will next to me. So, yeah, just get through the first couple of corners and, um, yeah, qualifying speed hasn't quite converted into, you know, great race pace, but, um, yeah, we've made a few changes and um, hopefully it's for the positive and we'll see what happens. It's always a good thing when there's conversations about how teammates will manage a battle because it means that you're both fighting for victories. Have there been any more conversations around that? this afternoon? Nope, we just both like our jobs, so we'll uh, keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> best way to go about it, wish you all the best, good luck. Thanks guys. Cam Waters went from 10th to 4th in the previous race, you start this one out of 3rd, is this the race we finally see a Ford on the top step of the podium? I hope so mate, um, Carl was pretty, pretty speedy in that one, so it was cool to uh, you know race forward through the pack, um, you know, there's a few things which We'd like the car to do better, but it's obviously not too bad at the same time. So, um, yeah, starting a bit further forward, hopefully get a good start and get into the race and um, give it to these Camaros up the front. Did you get the chance to review the start of the race from the previous race? The Both the Coke guys had a bit of teamwork going on at turn one and two at the start of the last one. Do you think you've got a few tricks for them? Mate, I've always got, always got tricks in my sleeve. So, uh, no, I actually haven't watched the start of the last race. I was too busy in the middle of... Uh, back in the pack, so um, nah, it's, it'll be good. It'll be a bit of fun. These guys will be um, giving it everything they've got, and I'll make sure I'm in the mix. You spoke after the previous race today that you needed to make this car a little bit better. <laughs> what aspect of the car are you looking to improve that you think will help you get to that uh, final destination of being on the top step of the podium? Uh, it's just a bit of tyre life. Um, we've changed a couple of little things, but haven't reinvented the wheel, so I think, yeah, we'll just get another race under our belt and, and see where we are when we, you know, race a little bit further forward with the quicker guys and um, try and put a bit of pressure on them and, and we'll see if they can uh, show their true pace. Good luck, Cam. Thanks. Mark Scaife, it was safe to say that Cameron Waters, Tickford had sort of lost their way a little bit, but they seem to have made a step forward here this weekend. Oh, for sure. And, and it's not just Cam. Thomas Randall's been fast. James Courtney was fast in practice. So there's no doubt that they've made the cars better, Jess. The thing that they've got to improve is the tyre degradation. And the way that the car performs at the back end of the race is what they really need to concentrate on. And looking at the form from the previous race, I reckon they've already done that. We've been speaking a lot over the course of the weekend about Matt Stone Racing and what a brilliant job they've done. We've got Jack LeBrock starting out of fourth on the grid this afternoon and his rookie teammate Cameron Hill a little bit further back. How do they try and play themselves into a podium this afternoon? Well, they got caught out. They got boxed up a little bit in the traffic in the early part of that race, but honestly they've been very consistent. Other than the Coke cars, they've been the next best. Well, they'll be working really hard this afternoon to try and make sure that those great qualifying results can translate into terrific race results but what a beautiful day we've had here uh, at Simmons Plains this afternoon clear skies it has been very very chilly a top of only 13 and there's been a gusty southerly keeping us on our toes but really these are perfect conditions to go racing we're counting down to race start it's time now for the national anthem
and it is gorgeous down here in the sunshine at the moment as the 25 cars and drivers prepare to get underway for our 12th race of the 2023 Repco Supercars Championship and Will Brown is alongside. He'll be starting on the front row of the grid. This is turning into something of a Coca-Cola racing story. There was only <laughs> one one hundredth between you two characters at the end of the quality session for this one. Yeah, I saw uh, at the second quality there, he's tucked up right behind my bumper starting the lap, and I thought, oh, yes, he left it a bit back. He must have thought I was a bit slower, but uh, he tucked up right in behind and got a really good toe, and I was getting one as well, so he did a great job, but so tight. But cool to get a front row lockout. We'll see what happens into uh, into uh, turn two there. Hopefully he's a bit nicer to me than Feeney, so uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, if I can sort of, you know, slot in in second and then run our own race and see how we go. You won and two in the championship at the moment. You've had six podiums. He's had nine. It is turning into quite a battle between you guys so it'll be eyes on to get down there to turn two and try and jump him. Yeah definitely, I'll, like I say I'll wait and see what happens if we slot in second that's alright as well and uh, we'll see how we go with pace during this one but um, yeah it is a bit of a tough one you know like I, I was able to turn underneath him and get the lead for a bit in the last race and I thought how good is this and then he came back at me and passed me so uh, it's good racing and uh, you know it's just uh, we're having a lot of fun with it. We did enjoy I know you're a salesman but we did enjoy the salesmanship trying to negotiate a position change there at one point <laughs> in that previous race. Is that on again? Are you going to try and sharpen those sales skills? Yeah, I said, oh, you know, I've got a bit of pace. I'll give it back. And then he started to put the hammer down, started to pull away from me. I said, don't worry, guys, he's quicker than me. So, uh, no, it was an interesting one. You just, with these cars, you think you've got a bit of pace and then you overheat the rear tyres or something and then you drop off. So I think I thought I had that bit more pace at that stage. And then within two laps, I, I'd torch the rear tyres and uh, had Cam Waters coming back at me pretty strong at the end there. So, um, yeah, overall awesome last race and hopefully this one's good. Great job so far this weekend. You've already had a victory. Congratulations. Go get them. Enjoy this last one. Cheers. Thanks, Neil. Yeah, thanks, Will. Will Brown, Coca-Cola Racing by Erebus. He'll start off the front row of the grid with his teammate, Brody Kostecki, and they've done an awesome job so far this weekend. A couple of characters that I want to have a conversation to here. Walking at an equal disappearing pace. Nice try, Mr Waters and Mr LeBrock. I'll catch up with you later. Hey, great job so far this weekend. I know that you've had several conversations about it on air already, but brilliant performance team punching above its weight. Wonderful to see for everybody at Truck Assist. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing for the team. They're doing an awesome job and uh, yeah, this whole Gen 3 era has been a sort of, I suppose, a good reset for, for Matt and the rest of the team and everyone at Truck Assist Racing. So yeah, we're really enjoying it. We've just got to keep the momentum going now. We've had some good consistency over each uh, round now, which is great to be able to back it up week in, week out. So yeah, hopefully we can keep doing it and um, yeah, hopefully we can have a good run this afternoon. New generation cars provided a reset moment, hasn't it? To go away, build and fettle these cars, start from scratch. You had older gear last time round, gee, you've shot up to the top. Yeah, 100%. The guys have done an awesome job and uh, putting, putting a lot of effort into these car builds over the summer. Um, even, yeah, Matt and Jimmy been been riding on the tools. It's uh, been pretty special and pretty cool to be a part of that. So, yeah, we're having a good time doing it and, yeah, got a great uh, young bunch of guys and, and girls helping us out. So, yeah, we've got to keep building and um, have to move forward. Jump in. Good to see you. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks Jack. Thanks. Don't run away next time. <laughs> Catch up with him soon. Over here on the next row of the group, we'll have a conversation from position number five with Tim Slade because these guys at New Lawn Racing have been doing an outstanding job. We've been talking about it a bit this year as well. Hey, Tim, good to catch up one more time and uh, great performance so far this weekend. Blake Smith is helping in the background as well. He's back engineering you and you guys have got some great pace. Yeah, first time um, we've had an engineer for more than a round this year, so <laughs> definitely help. What's that? Continuity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, that, that, that's been good. Um, yeah, I mean, couldn't couldn't ask for too much more in the races so far, picking up the, the spots that we did. So, a little bit closer to the front in this one, and, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. You said to me right at the very beginning of the year that the pace was there from day one in Newcastle, and there was a bit of backroom process that needed to be refined. Do you feel like you're making progress there? Yeah, um, you know, Perth was an important weekend for, for me personally. I just wanted to, I don't know, I felt as though it was so up and down, like like you said, the pace was there, but we didn't really put it together. And, you know, teams made mistakes, I made mistakes. So I just wanted a good sort of solid round there and something to, to build on for uh, for this round and, and, the, and the next few. So, um, yeah, I feel as though we've got that, but hopefully we can uh, finish it off today. Enjoy your run this afternoon, Tim Slade. Thank, thank you me. very much. He'll be out there in car number 23 for Newlon and Peter Zubris. Have a quick word to Brock Feeney as well because that drive that Brock put together in that previous race, it's about as good as they're going to be. Fantastic performance. Well done, mate. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was a good one. Um, yeah, obviously good to get another win, but, uh, yeah, we've got to back it up. Well, 
try and move up a fair bit here. So uh, looking forward to it. It's going to be a good race. Crazy, isn't it? What a difference fresh air makes. I mean, you got boxed out down there at turn two in that previous one, but you're able to maximise great strategy, great pace, and you didn't blink. Now you've sort of got to do it all again, but a lot more congestion. It just goes to show how tight it is in qualifying. Yeah, it's crazy. It's sort of half a tenth in qualifying um, and you're a couple of rows back. So now we'll work through it. I think we'll six on the first lap in the last one. So we can certainly do it. Just got to have a clean start. And yeah, we certainly got a fast car. I spoke to you before the start of the race. Dad's not here. He keeps missing out on these race wins. What's going on with Paul? Yeah, no, he's sitting back at home, so hopefully he's enjoying this one. But, um, yeah, I've got to make sure when he comes to the next one that I can back it up now. Give him something to cheer about. Exactly. Thanks, Brock. All the best. Have a good run this afternoon. Car number 88. He'll be driving for Red Bull and Ampol Racing. Thomas Randall down here has also done a fine job this weekend in the Castrol entry driving for Tickford. He's already seated up. I'll have a quick word before he fully bolts in. Nice to see you, young Thomas. Good run so far this weekend. Expectations? Yeah, thanks, Neil. Uh, yeah, it's been going good. I unfortunately made a bit of a mistake trying to pass Cam Hill in the last one and caught a bit of damage, so I went from a top 10 result to out of the 20. But uh, the speed's been really good. Two top eight qualities on Sunday today, so... Let's see what we've got. There's uh, some pretty good uh, talent around me and we'll try and get off the line well. What was the damage? I think it was the right rear toe link and the lower control arm. So, uh, yeah, I just circulated for the last four laps. So I'm um, pretty disappointed in myself, but, um, you know, that's racing at the end of the day. And she's all squared up okay now? Yeah, all good. Uh, yeah, boys just checked it before and... Uh, We'll, uh, we'll send it in this one. All right. Thanks, Thomas. Good to catch up. Castrol Racing, keep an eye out for him. He's driving for Tickford this afternoon. And I'll get a final word in before we have to duck off and get this race underway with Cam Hill. Mark and I were particularly impressed with the run that this fellow had in the previous one. At one stage there, he was operating up in third position. And yesterday, we saw him racing hard with Shane Van Gisberg. And what a turnaround weekend for you, Cam. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you, mate. Yeah, it's been the weekend... Uh, we wanted to have and needed to have, uh, and I'm really enjoying racing up the front. Now, you've been working hard to get into the professional end of the game for a long period of time in Toyota 86, in Carrera Cup, in Dunlop Super 2. You're finally here. Is it meeting expectation? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's just this is the pinnacle, and the, the field is so close. Uh, it's just awesome to see, um, I guess, a level of motorsport so high. All right, mate, go get him this afternoon. To keep him amused with a bit of extra work, good to catch up, Cam. He's also been working very hard with his own Formula Ford race team this weekend who've also been successful. So even though we've been teasing the notion of the weather, it is glorious out here in the sunshine at the moment. The wind has actually dropped off. If you're in the shade, yes, it's a bit breezy, but out here in the sunlight at the moment, it is absolutely gorgeous. We've got 25 cars. We've got 42 laps. We've got 100 kilometres, and I can promise you the blast of the 15,000 odd horsepower of these cars making the 150 metre run down to turn two, it'll be worth the price of admission. Because it's a lockout on the front row of the grid and we've seen already the level of consistency and the beautiful qualifying performances from the Coca-Cola Camaros with Brody Kostecki from Will Brown. Both did 50.6s. 50.6 also for Cam Waters in third. 50.6 for the truck assist Camaro in behind. A 50.7 for Tim Slade, 50.7 for Brock Feeney, the previous race winner. Cam Hill, Neil was just talking to him. He's done a tremendous job this weekend, a 50.7 also. And Thomas Randall's been fast. Shane Van Gisbergen, what a great job they've done to repair that car. Mark Winterbottom, 50.9, he's done a nice job. That's the best he's qualified this weekend. Chas Mostert, he was man of the match in the last race. He passed eight cars on the track. Can he get to the back of the podium with a similar scenario in this one? Bryce Forward, 13. Percat, 14th. Andre Heimgartner, mystery. He was on the podium yesterday. That car is very fast as a race car. James Golding's been strong. Anton Di Pasquale, and we were just talking to David Reynolds. They've been lost this weekend with those Penrite Mustangs. They think their race pace is better. Let's have a look in this one and see what happens. James Courtney and Macaulay Jones. They line up just in front of Scott Pye and Todd Hazelwood. They're 21st and 22nd. Declan Fraser and Will Davison, 23rd and 24th. Will Davison obviously was very fast in the previous race. And Jack Smith rounds out the field in 25th position. But the run down to the first corner is going to be unbelievable. Neil just explained 
that from pole position down to turn in point for turn two is only 150 metres. It's the shortest run to the first corner in our tour. And the pressure is on these two guys. They didn't play nicely at the turning point for turn two in the previous one. They pushed Brock Feeney wide. This time, it's teammates against teammates. And how will that play out? That was the question that I was asking Will before. They are teammates, but in the end, racing drivers by nature and definition are in business for themselves. They want to win races. They want to win championships. They don't want the other guy to ultimately succeed. The story so far, and it's been a busy and exciting weekend, it's been a ripping weekend for Will Brown. Off to a big start yesterday with maximum points and a trophy for our winner of race number 10. We've also seen some fine form thus far from Brock Feeney. Great to have a conversation with Brock, who stitched together a perfect performance for our 11th race of the championship, and he grabbed 100 points in the process. And Brody kostecki has been there all weekend. He's been generating armor all pole positions, stealing the armor all cash, and stitching together some fine performances, and he'll start off the front row of the grid with his teammate today. You forget, Mark, to some extent, when you look at the number of races, 25-year-old Brody, 24-year-old Will Brown, how few races they've done in supercars. Brody's only up to his 82nd race. You're talking about people out there that are celebrating three, four, five, yep. 600 supercar races, and now we've got a new generation of stars out there that are really making an impressive fist of it. They certainly are, and we saw in Perth, remember, the youngest ever podium with Feeney, Kostecki, and Will Brown. So we've got some young superstars and they're at the pointy end of the field and they're doing a great job. Tech facts with our thanks to Century Batteries. Brake rating high. You get stuck into that middle pedal very hard here. Bumps, there's a few of them, but the track surface is pretty good. Tire wear's been generally low this weekend, turning for about 4.4 seconds around here as an average turn time and that short, sharp run down towards turn one. That crossover time, by the way, is where we refer to getting onto a wet tyre. There's no chance of that this afternoon. Thankfully, the sun is shining. Mark Larkham. Yeah, Crump, I reckon four things to watch out for in this race. These two drivers at the front here, they can't keep being mates forever. They are both too good. Will they eventually make contact? I don't know, I hope not. Jack LeBrock, the emergence of Matt Stone Racing. Shane Van Gisbergen four, back in the pack three, yet. But two, if I'm one. looking like a horse, I'm feeling like a horse, my Stop. face is long because Ford haven't done at all well this weekend. The great white hope sits right there. Cam Waters, can he manage his tyres to the back end of the race? The car's fast enough to do it, let's hope so. Kostecki and Brown, Coca-Cola, row one of the grid. Row number two, Cam Waters and Jack LeBrock. Is this the turnaround moment for Cam Waters? We're standing by for the final instalment of the Ned Whiskey Tasmania Super Sprint. There's our all clear. Green flag, green flag. Gisbergen, who's carrying a couple of bruises still beneath that car, but at least they got it out there. What a great job by Triple Eight and the Red Bull Ampole Racing Team for Shane to even be out there. Check this shot. <laughs> Curb cam, turn two, arriving into party through turn three, and they are wriggling through there on a colder tyre. It is not easy flat through that section of the racetrack. Right in the draft now, Brody Kostecki. He'll be getting a couple of kilometres an hour benefit tucked under the back of his teammate. He'll have to think about having a poke down the inside, but decides not to into six. 
Yeah, and that was probably a good decision. I thought he might have had a little lunge then, but he was conservative in his approach. He was right in behind Will Brown. And too early to have a big dive and too early to certainly make contact. Jack LeBrock looks fast. He's right there in behind them. Brock Fooney was able to capitalise on that early start drama. And as a consequence, he's come from sixth to fourth. Cam Waters is the one that's lost those three positions, as you can see on your totem. There is only 0.8 of a second covering those top four cars at the moment. Brown, Kostecki, LeBrock, Feeney. The cars are beginning to feel a little more normal now as everything comes up to temperature and pressure. We're looking at Mark Winterbottom. It was his birthday yesterday. He's copping pressure here from Shane Van Gisbergen, who ended up in the fence in race 11 in our previous race. Down here at turn six, contact with David Reynolds, ran wide. He's just made a nice move up the inside, though, and that brings him up one spot into eight. That was a nice pass, wasn't it? Got a nice toe in the draft, in the slipstream, and was able then to capitalise straight down the inside at turn six. Now let's have a look at this start, because this one from Will Brown, look at that. The jump, the reaction time, the initial jump, and then the power delivery and traction in the second phase was fantastic. And there's Cam Waters, one back and one wide around the outside. Down there. I didn't realise Andre Hunger and it went off. I didn't see that, did you, before? Yeah, 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 I didn't know which one it was, but I saw it was a BJR car. It was a bog down and a second stab at the clutch for Cam Waters, and that yields a bunch of spots on the run into turn two. And it was a fast starting Jack LeBrock as well, who got the kick nicely alongside Cam, and he slotted straight up into third spot. This is what it looks like from a little further back in the pack. Three wide over the crest at turn one. Oh, that was ugly. That was the reason why Heimgartner ended up down there. He was tangled with Golding at Payne and Reynolds with a bird's eye view of all that madness. And did you see the point that I was making before about how much the cars move around under brakes on cold tyres at turn three? Having to jump on the brake, moving left and right to avoid each other in all that craziness. So. Let's just see now, as things have settled down, what we're left with. So we've got a 0.3 of a second margin, Brown and Kostecki. And then another half second back to LeBrock. Feeney, then Slade, then Waters, Hill, Van Gisbergen, Winterbottom and Mostert now up into the 10. We think the squally fastest in the first sector. This is awkward. And he gets away with it. So I saw people here in the opening lap actually having to grab the brake yeah. to avoid all the craziness that was going on in that opening lap. There was so much hip and shoulder going on. So just a tiny couple of extra millimetres now in hand for Will Brown up there. And a different line, and we saw that in the previous race to Brody. Jack's running with him. So both those track assist cars are well in the frame. Waters has got the fastest lap of the race, but he's already given away two spots. And there's a lot of people using that narrower exit line off the hill at the hairpin, aren't they? And they're using it to good effect. Courtney around the outside now. Heimgartner trying to position himself to get down the inside of Golding. So Golding now has lost that spot. Heimgartner's there. And it also looks like underneath Heimgartner was Di Pasquale trying to make a move at the same time. Remember, there's a compulsory pit stop in this race. The requirement is that you can take it from any time lap five is commenced. We're past that point. It requires a minimum of two wheels and tyres to be changed. We're typically seeing more of that activity mid-race. You saw in the Century Batteries tech facts that it's not a track that particularly hurts the tyres. On board through turn five. We're riding with Brock Feeney. That's the viewpoint from position number four. He's in behind Jack LeBrock. This will give us an understanding of the behaviour of Jack's car as well. He's right in touch with the lead here. Brock leaves it in fourth gear, just taps the rev limiter ever so briefly. Back to second gear, turn two. And he gives Jack a little love bite through the middle of turn two. Fires it out the other side. And then through turn three, it's 165 kilometres an hour as Declan Fraser finds himself pointing the wrong way at turn two. And then on the run up to that hairpin, they're peaking at 245 kilometres an hour pending the wind. And that's awkward. 
Reed skating off to the inside for Declan, and then the two BJR cars were off to his right. A little and bump here. Yep. Right in the middle of the turn four corner, so Jack will have felt that. You just feel the little disturbance in the car, and you feel it in the palms of your hands, and that's I'm here. A little knock on the door just to let him know that his neighbour is eager to get on with the job. You called it. He gave him another one down at turn two. I'm Gartner now battling to get the car up the inside of Courtney's Mustang. And now they're alongside each other now. How's this play out? Because you don't want to be on the outside over there, but now you do. Oh, and they're both off. That's, yeah, that was sort of always going to happen, that one. It's starting to look awkward right. over the top of the hill at turn one. Just give it a good feel to see if we'll like it. Heimgarten on the podium yesterday. Courtney's been finding some form recently as well, but unfortunately, both of them locking horns on the run into turn two. Brown, 0.6 of a second over Kostecki. It's still Pope racing one and two. The Rock in third from Feeney, then Slade, Waters, Hill. Van Gisberg and Most at Winterbottom, the 10. Fastest lap belongs to Cam Waters. More side-by-side -side action. This time, we've got Feeney trying to go down the inside. Now, if you can make this stick, it works, but it's hard to do on Jack LeBron. They are absolutely jammed together, and Slade wants part of this as well. And in behind him, you've got Cam Waters, who might get a yield if there's any trip-ups in front. He goes to the outside looking for fresh air. So Feeney has been able to squeak on by. Nice driving. Both of them, actually. They gave themselves enough racing room to get over that rise and around the left. They had a little bump alongside each other, but they then got through turn three without further contact. It was actually a really nice job. Waters getting the benefit of the toe, and so was Slade then. Jack LeBrock had them covered. Meantime, that margin between Will and Brody's opened up to 0.8 of a second. He's just taking a little bit more of the pressure off. Feeney's two seconds from the lead in third. Our focus for this battle here at the moment. Waters is sixth. Let's have a look at the Brock Feeney overtake on the Budding Straight power pass here, and he forced the issue. He used a bit of curb to do it. That was nicely done. He chased all that oversteer that was triggered by the bump on the curb. Once he got it to the inside of the road at turn one, you can pretty well bully your way through at turn two. And so that worked. The seeds were sown back at turn six. And that was a nice job because he had to wrestle it. Didn't he come easy. Did. Yeah. And over the rise, we saw the drama with Andre Heimgartner and James Courtney. They were able to avert all that drama. They gave themselves some racing room. It was pretty hustle and bustle but it was a nice move in the end. And Slate was trying to take advantage in the end because it looked like Brock had got the job done and then Jack LeBrock was struggling to get the car off turn three and might have been able to capitalise down into turn four for Slade. Nice exchange. Tim was right to think of that. He was. Been, filling yeah. his windscreen. And there's a bit of amusement when you're in the middle of all that stuff as well because <laughs> you get a first-hand view of all the madness that's unfolding. It's like, come on, come on, get into him. Try and unsettle. So he's in an ideal spot there at the moment, sitting in fifth spot, and it's three seconds off the lead. Now, Finney will get some benefit here. He's 1.3 behind Kostecki. He'll be able to roll in a bit of fresh air for a while. Meantime, under investigation, lap nine, turn two, the incident between cars eight and five. That's going to be looked at as well, and that is Andre Heimgartner and James Courtney for that interlock that ended up with them both in the gravel down there at two. This is going to serve Cam Hill well in his experience and holding off Van Gisbergen because I saw Shane having a move and placing a half move in the middle of the hairpin on the last lap. So we'll keep an eye on what Van Gisbergen does down there because for young Cam Hill, who's a ripper, he's a great young man and he's been doing a really good job, especially this weekend. And for him to be able to race Van Gisbergen, great experience. So this is the incident under investigation. Andre Heimgartner in the white car for Brad Jones Racing and RJ Batteries. The Snowy River Caravans entry is James Courtney. He's on the outside and Right here, they're both arguing over a very narrow bit of real estate in a narrow racing line. And Andre, narrow with too much pace, has had to bumble over the top of the rise here. The car's gone light. It started to slide, locking brakes. Two of them in heavy-duty combat, and unfortunately, 
neither was able to escape cleanly and stay on the racing line. So it was a gift for the next car in the queue. One of the Shelby Power Racing cars was able to grease on by. And it was the complete opposite when we saw the exchange with Brock Feeney and the way that that was all unfolding. So stop here for Nick Perka. Uh, there's a bigger issue. Yeah. So they're in the driver's door. No further action. Here's the report from race control and what happened down there. I think both were giving as good as they were getting on the run to turn two between Heimgartner and Courtney. So they neutralised each other at Van Gisbergen in. So this is a bit opposite to the normal procedure for Shane. So they're looking to try and get some gain here from an undercut, get onto their fresher tyre earlier than the people they're racing. Calm instruction on the spot. Rears only and gone. Nice procedural pit stop. Now what that does is that sends Shane back out all on his own. He's got hundreds of metres before the next car, which is Declan Fraser, who has turned the wrong way at turn six. So with a fresh tyre and fresh air, he'll probably get a reasonable yield that might just fold him up a little. Remember, he was down in ninth. It could get him back into that fifth, sixth region and maybe a little beyond, Craig. Yeah, I just actually come and ask the guys at Walkshaw United, uh, Walkshaw Andretti United, uh, what went on with Nick Perkat's car. He come in and they serviced, put two rear tyres on, but then they opened the door, they dived in. The brake pedal pad come loose, so they had to tighten up for Nick. That's a weird one, thank you. You don't need any of that kind of distraction in the footwell of these race cars. 1.1 seconds is the gap for Alex Stecky at the moment. We're focused on Jack LeBrock, who's got a mirror full of Tim Slade at the moment. Slade has been quick this weekend. Is he going to get an extra couple of Ks here in hand to have a dive? Yes and yes. But is he going to carry it? Oh, no, they make awkward contact, and that may have tweaked that right front steering for Tim Slade then. He had the pace, and he was able to break just that fraction later, but wasn't able to carry the speed through the mid-corner. Meantime, Bryce forward in Midi's electrical entry. This is given Cam Waters a run. Radio is shit. We cannot understand you. So, let's see what happens off the back of the hairpin here because Slade drags down low. Cam Waters tries to come off the hairpin with a run. He's in the slipstream now. And he looks, is he dummy? Oh, gee, he was close to getting down there, but Slade was, I think, his own moment, wasn't he? He, he almost backed it in there, Mark. Yeah. He had so much rear brake lit up on the run into turn six then. I could see his hands working to catch the slide, and he was getting a lot of pressure from Cam Waters. And, and if that continues and it starts to further heat those rear tyres on Tim's car, Waters will be able to slide by. So already there's been a little open gap there between Tim and Jack LeBrock. It's taking a bit of the pressure off Jack, and I'm just wondering out loud whether or not that steering on the right front corner of the Newlon car got hurt in the process. Todd Hazelwood, cool drive entry. Oh, that is an issue. Bring it back. So they used hand signals there to note that they were not satisfied when that car was released. It hadn't been talked up properly. That happened to Brad Jones Racing yesterday and they copped the fine and championship points in the process. Chas Mostert sitting in seventh position here, over one racing in Optus. Now what are we looking at in the background here? We're looking at James Courtney and Macaulay Jones. And that was awkward. And, and I think it was Andre going off in front of him at the same time. So that's Heimgartner. There's Macaulay. Now watch how he straightens him. So <laughs> James is heavily into the side of the Pizza Hut Camaro. He straightens him up, but just the head. Andre was having his own moment out into the dirt on the right-hand side coming out of turn seven. Now whilst all these guys are battling with each other here, especially with Slade, LeBrock and Waters, 
the advantage is going to Shane Van Gisbergen. Like we were talking, so mm. fresh tyres on that car and uh, some open road is helping the cause. He's down in the hairpin at turn four. So this is advantaging Shane at the moment in the corrected positions. Meantime, Brown's continuing to ease away, and he's doing it at the rate of anywhere between about half a tenth to a tenth a lap over his teammate at the moment. And he did this in Western Australia, where he was in his own universe, and he was obviously strong yesterday. Remember, he's already had six podiums so far this year. He's 101 points behind his teammate. One of the outstanding facts about Brody's championship season so far, we've got 11 races in the bag. He's been on the podium nine times and he's on target to be back on it again today. So he's continuing to play in his championship position very nicely at the moment. Great consistency. I think in terms of round points for the weekend at the moment, Will Brown is actually leading. So it's a nice flow on from the form they had in Perth. Just further to the Van Gisbergen and claw back here with that strategy. Just looking at the numbers, if it continues on current trend as Cam Hill comes in, he's probably going to be able to grab Slade, uh, LeBrock, and almost get in touch to a degree with his teammate. He'll be a second or two behind him. Now, he'll lose a little bit of that advantage, and some of it will also seesaw in the other direction later in the race. But what it's doing at the moment is it's making Shane more of a factor. We'll see whether that carries on. It's going to depend on what the last 10 laps look like for him having yeah. gone onto those tyres early. Off and in. Now Brody Kostecki is in. Jack LeBrock is in. And this is on the 22nd of 42 laps. Rears for Brody. Go, 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 go. Nice. Looks pretty straightforward. Yep. Thomas Randall in together with Mark Winterbottom and Will Davison's there in the background too in the shell car. Yeah, be clear on exit, mate. Clear on exit. So I think you're going to find that... I'm just looking for Shane Van Gisbergen because I would have thought that LeBrock is going to be pretty close. Here we go. This is pretty close. In fact, it's very close. Oh, I thought that he was going to run then in there. And he's only a car length behind with warm tyres. So Jack will have to watch himself here because this bloke is the master of taking advantage of the circumstance. His race craft is impeccable. He gives him a bump. That's, that was his forte last year. He did it all the time. Purposely gives him a bump there. So he's got the car alongside. And that quickly becomes the inside for turn six after you go through that right hand kink. Yeah, he's through. Sorry, Mark. De Pasquale, Reynolds, Golding, Smith and Courtney are now also in for their compulsory. That little battle could go on for a while here between Van Gisbergen now and the truck assist entry. We'll see whether or not Jack can respond. Remember, Shane will be ultimately dealing with an older tyre. Will Brown, our race leader, is in. So he's, to a degree, responding to his teammate and perhaps the progress of Brock Feeney. Come across now. Nice and hard on the board. Keep your foot on the brake until it goes up. Yep, third, oh, nice good stop. Go, 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 go. Straight. Really good. That was good. That was a good stop. In fact, three seconds was the best I've seen so far, which was actually Van Gisbergen. Yeah, Reynolds did a 3-1. 3-1 also for Jack Smith. Let's have a look and see what Will Brown's is, a 3-5. So that's right in amongst it. Deeper Squally did a 3-4. Winterbottom a 3-3. Three, three. A lot of them are in the threes. The teams are getting better and better. They know that there's in relative terms, cheap time to be made in the pit, so they're rehearsing it hard at the workshops day in and day out. And that one lap overcut, see how much gap Will Brown's got back to sticky that one lap overcut, it always works here, doesn't it? Yeah. Feeney's in, Waters in, Bostad in. At least Tim Slade leading this motor race at the moment. Feel the brake pressure as the car goes up, and you'll stop centre on the board, please. Both the Tickford and the Triple H 
both stops look pretty straightforward there. Look like they both did a nice job. Mostert's in the background in that mobile one white car as well. And uh, he's going to arrive on the scene with a bit of traffic right here at turn two. And I think he managed to slot in between. Yes, he did. Just behind Mark Winterbottom and just in front of Bryce Fullwood. Your point before about the gain that Van Gisbergen's made, he's right in behind his teammate now. Yeah. yeah. So that early stop has really worked. Tim Slade back go, club was there for that one. Yeah. Above on the roof. Now anyway, he goes. So that's a nice stop. And that leaves now Scott Pye uh, in control. I don't think that Declan's done his compulsory stop. Neither has Andre Heimgartner. Everybody else has done the job. I think this Slade exit's going to be close with Ben Gisbergen, I think. No, he's got him. Got him. Shane's got him. Yeah. But uh, so's LeBron. High leads. I'm Gartner is second. However, the car that's first in the queue is Will Brown. And he's got a margin over his teammate of 2.7 seconds currently. So he's actually extended, as you were pointing out, Mark, the advantage. Driver's eye this weekend. We've got nine cars and drivers carrying this unique view. 16 laps remain. Been racing already for 23 odd minutes. And the track will be noticeably cooler now. There are certainly more shadows evident with these pictures that we're looking at. This gives you a very strong idea and sense how much movement there is in the car. Go, mate. Actually, 3.2. And how you have to chase these cars. One of the most difficult stops on the tour, getting these cars pulled up and dealing with that hairpin. It's huffing and puffing back here. That's a lot of smoke coming out of, is that? Uh, Camp Waters. Waters. So what was that? It looked to me like there was smoke before the breaking oil, It's got a... It looked like oil smoke. There was certainly something heating on the run down the front straight. Yeah, guys, I've been talking to Brock Feeney and a couple of drivers about tyre deck. We've been talking about how much, I suppose, more nervous these cars are to drive around here. So I asked him, I said, what do they actually like to drive on the opening laps of the race? He said, they're loose. And I said, what about the end of the race, after you've done your pit stops and everything else? How's the tyre deck? Especially through turn three, because normally it's been easy flat. He said, at the end of the race, once the tyres go away from you, you struggle to get through turn three with full throttle. So that then really hinders your run down into turn four. So the drivers around here at the moment with good car setups are going to have better tyre deck and then have better advantage at the end of the race for passing opportunities into turn four. Thanks for the update, Craig Lowndes. Ten times a victor here at Simmons Plains. Now that kerfuffle that we saw in the pit stop earlier where they had to bring the cool drive car back uh, is under investigation and that'll be post-race that they have a look at that. Now Scott Pye's come in, that leaves Andre Heingartner leading. But the corrected leader of the race at the moment is Will Brown over his teammate, Brody Gostecki. He's actually advancing that margin at the moment and pretty significantly, Mark. He is. not There's a serious problem going with Brody Gostecki because he's the 23rd fastest car and he was 21st on the lap prior. Yeah, so it's out to 4.1 seconds and that'll be because he's either made a mistake or there's been some traffic or something else has gone on there. Or his water's down the inside and having a very light rub. And this is on Cam Hill. And you can see that the sun is hard in their eyes here at this time of day as they approach turn five, which makes it extra challenging when you're trying to size somebody up here at turn six. Oh, Waters is right on the dirty side of the road and he got it stopped. Heimgartner in. That's the last car to stop. And it continues further behind. In behind, Waters is busted here, trying to muscle on by two. And I think he's done it. He has. Nicely done. Those cars look like they're bolted together. So behind Mostert, Hill, Fullwood and Winterbottom absolutely nose to tail as Fullwood just moves back to the right. Frosty tries to sneak it on up the inside. Contact. Contact. 
So that's four and a half seconds now Will Brown over Brody Kostecki. And what was his last lap speed? Brody was 13th on the last lap. Will was third, uh, third fastest. James Golding was the fastest car in the field. Winterbottom up the inside now, looking on forward to make a move. A bit going on in this it phase is. of the race. All of a sudden, Ooh. there's that's nice. a bit of tit for tat going on. So Winterbottom up into 10. Forward drops a spot to Mitty's entry. Feeney's 5.4 off the lead, but we talked before about the advantage that Van Gisbergen and his group have been able to make by that undercut and has solidly got him up into fourth. He's only 1.2 away from his teammate. He's only a whisker away from a podium here, but he has the challenge of dealing with an old tyre at the back end of the race, of which there are 12 laps remaining. Came in on lap 14, Van Gisbergen, so quite a lot earlier than those he's racing. So, for example, 10 laps earlier than his teammate, Brock Feeney. Ooh, that was, that was ugly. <laughs> I think oh. there's a bit of that is ugly going on up there in a few spots at the moment. So, end of a busy race weekend. A few frustrated drivers not achieving what they ultimately wanted. Now, what's happening here? Feeney all over the back of Brody Kostecki. All of a sudden, Brody's hurting a little bit. It's now 5.4 seconds to the lead, and here's an invitation for Brock to get up the inside, and he's going to do this easily. He's actually got him done, dusted, and passed, slaughtered him by the middle of the corner, and popped out the other side with a position. And he is bluing over the radio, asking the team, why am I so slow? So he doesn't know what's going on in terms of his pace. Yeah. Because yeah. all of a sudden it's lost pace. 23rd fastest on the last lap for Brody Kostecki. So something affecting the performance of this car. Here's the onboard from Brock's viewpoint, and he does this easy. Down the inside, by the time he'd hooked it and found the mid-corner, he was actually in the lead. That'd be one of the easiest mid-corner passes at Turn 4 in the 50 championship runs that we've had here. Yep. Brody just made it easy. He knows that he's struggling. So Marty Short, Mark Dutton with a pat of encouragement. Andrew Edwards is watching all this as well because this could, if the Brody form continues and he's got a battle on his hands, we might find that Van Gisbergen's able to get onto the podium here. He's still in behind Brody for the time being. Eight if you want. He's in behind McCauley Jones here, 21st and 22nd. Have a look at those gaps there. So those big margins to Van Gisberg and back to Kostecki. So he's in a lot of trouble, Brody, at the moment. Oh, no. We're going to go to chat in a moment, but we've got a problem here with Slade. So he's limping all of a sudden. So we've got a couple of cars out there with a question mark. We'll get to Chad when we can. So it's a five and a half second margin brown over Feeney. Chad, can you add to this? I think it's tyre related, guys. The only thing that they were saying is he's just not happy on this tyre set. And I did see his engineer walk down and check the tyres that are on the garage floor as if to say, did we put the right ones on? So we'll try and get more out of them once it all sort of calms down. But Brody, very unhappy with that tyre set right now. Uh, for Tim Slade, I heard a couple of laps ago a car sounding very off song and that's getting worse and worse. So for Tim Slade, he just rolled past pit lane then and the thing is sounding very, very average. I haven't heard anything from the team yet, but I'd imagine you'll see Tim, Lade, Tim Slade in the lane next time by. He's dropped all the way down to 23rd position in car number 23 after being a top half dozen contender. So what a shame. Spoke to him on the grid. There's been a lot of buoyancy around the performance of that team and the way that they've been building their crew and their equipment. So, uh, so a couple of weird things going on out there at the moment. Brody Kostecki with a question mark over the behaviour of that car. He was 17th fastest on the last lap. And Van Gisbergen looking to capitalise on a potentially wounded Brody Kostecki. Our championship leader came into this race today with a 101-point advantage. And remember that the Van Gisbergen car had surgery between races, so it made heavy contact with the right front at the fence on the outside here of Turn 6. And there he goes. That's a position that gets him onto the podium, potentially, for Van Gisbergen. And he came in on lap 14 for these tyres, so still performing pretty strongly at this it's phase of the race. Certainly is a little bump, and that's a little return of serve from Perth. A little bump from Brody. 
and that car just limping along there is Tim Slade just trying to stay out of everybody's way as it self-destructs. So last time round for Brody, 22nd fastest, which included being passed. Our leader was fifth fastest. Brock Feeney in second position was the second fastest car. The quickest car in the field is actually Chaz Mostert. They were quick later in race 11, our previous race today as well, at the back end of the race. So it comes to the, the track and the car performance comes to them a little bit later. We're just going to hold here for a moment and look at where your favourite drivers are. What's evident is there's a racing line and then there's a sea of rubber off the racing line. So the moral of that story is don't step off the race line <laughs> unless someone sends you out there. Exactly. Waters is in seventh. Hill in eighth, Winterbottom ninth, Deep Pasquale in tenth, then forward in eleventh, Reynolds, Davison, Payne, Randall. And just to actually illustrate when we just hold in that position there, how wild it is over that little rise on the run into turn one. It's got everything going for it down there to lock a brake. It makes the car rock and roll, pitches and rolls at the same time. And if you don't modulate that brake pedal pressure very gently, you can end up locking a brake. Here we go, Mark Winterbottom up the inside of Cam Hill. He's currently in turn five and he's taking Anton Di Pasquale with him for the ride. And he's got him done. And I think that Cam's gonna drop a couple of spots in this process. This happened to him previously. And yeah, that little bump there escorted him out into the marbles that you just made reference of. The guy that I'm just looking at the totem there that's done a great job in the race again is Will Davison, who's up 11 positions. So he's made a lot of ground. Deeper Squally's made eight. So Van Gisbergen and Kostecki alongside each other again. So Brody's trying to get around the outside to rehash this. Now that might be the early tire condition. Well, oh, he's flicked back the other way. Oh, I thought there was gonna be a hit then. He flicked back the inside again to dummy down the inside. Um, so the early stop started to hurt those tyres. Yeah, and LeBrock could capitalise here as well. So Shane's racing brains immediately flicked into counter-attack. And uh, he had to think about trying to get back down the inside, but it might be diminishing returns because of these... And down, pull away now. Of these key runners, he stopped far earlier. And those tyres will have seen better days. Now, Brody Kostecki, he stopped on lap 21. Shane Van Gisbergen stopped on lap 14. Seven lap difference, but they're still locked in combat here. It's a good race thus far. And he is right under the rear wing of the fellow that he had a wild race with on the Saturday in Perth. And he covers because he's not entirely on top of his regular game here at the moment, Brody Kostecki, and he gets a little love tap right in the middle of turn six gingerly just advancing that throttle and chasing a bit of oversteer through the corner. So at this point in the day with three laps remaining, they're all in skating mode. Meantime, Will Brown is going to stitch together another victory here, Mark, and that's going to move him on to three for 2023. What a story. What a run. Yeah, he did it all from the drop of the clutch. Has this been... little battle is not resolved. How's this, but How's Jack LeBron going, you reckon? He's got the best seat in the house at the moment. He goes, these boys play for keeps. He could be a real beneficiary here because there's a question mark over Brody. And we know that Shane's tyres are getting right down to the bottom of those tread depths. So, Will Brown with 4.8 seconds. And he is looking like a million bucks out there at the moment to stitch together another 100 points. Meantime, Cam Waters hung onto that fastest lap from early in the race. Yeah, so that's two in a row for him. And the pace they've shown, unfortunately, was really hindered by the start when he went back to sixth. He lost three positions very early. And now you can see Will Brown on the back straight and has absolutely dominated this race. Driven superbly, had a good early battle with his teammate. They were able to stretch the gap on Brock Feeney. But masterful display by this young man. So he's done this a couple of times now where once he's in the zone, he's a machine, he's a weapon. He did it in Western Australia. He did it yesterday. 
He's got a light-hearted, happy-go-lucky nature, but he's a fully focused race driver. And I have not seen him put a foot wrong in this one. Oh, that doesn't look good for Matt. Something really ugly going on the right front corner of Matt Payne's car here at the moment. And it's going to cart him off the road. So the front bumper on that thing carving into the tyre. And uh, he's just got to gently... Go, Keep pressing on. Keep ooh, pressing on. Gently nurse it around for another 2.4 k's. Meantime, Will Brown. He's going to stitch this one together, Mark. He's already had six podiums so far this year. And he's in what is shaping up to be an awesome battle with his teammate for championship supremacy. What a weekend for Coca-Cola Racing and Will Brown makes it two victories in Tasmania. Fucking awesome, Will. Fucking awesome. Great job. 100 points. Four second margin over Brock Feeney, who's also done a superlative job this weekend. Brody hung on. Can you yep. believe it? We thought that he might have lost that podium spot to Shane, but Van Gisbergen and the tyres on that car had seen better days. Jack LeBrock, a fine performance in fifth. But that's a mega performance by the youngster from Toowoomba in Queensland by Will Brown. He can be proud of that drive. We've seen enough of these now to know that it's no fluke. These cars are in phase. Daniel and Betty are celebrating another big one. He's been very impressive this weekend. He looks calm. He's taken it in his stride. And he's jammed at home with a four-second margin over Brock Feeney in the end. Dunlop tyres for sale at the end of this one. <laughs> Certainly are. But he's jumped straight off the line from the outside of the front row that become a dominant early performance. And as soon as he did that, he just, he was done. Bolted, yeah. yeah. Well, fresh air. The drivers yeah. talked to us a lot about that. So what a weekend for him. In race one this weekend, position number one. In the second race, position number three. In the third race, position number one. That equals being a championship contender. He keeps that kind of flow going as we head to the back of the year. The young man who you can see on screen here at the moment is going to be a real threat in the 23 Repco Supercars Championship. He's home by four seconds on our unofficial results here from Brock Feeney and Brody Kostecki in third spot, making it a Coca-Cola one and three. Red Bull two and four. Truck assist driver Jack LeBrock in position number five for a beautiful drive. Fast finishing Chaz Mostert in the next position six, followed then by Cam Waters who lost that ground earlier. I don't know what the smoke was that was going on with his car. We'll get to the bottom of that story. Then it's winner bottom, then deeper squally, then forward. But Pertec victory lane today belongs to this young man for the second time this weekend. He did not blink. They've done a beautiful job. We were asking ourselves out loud early in the championship season with the momentum that they showed early on continue as you went through different track variants. Newcastle, street circuit, wild, bumpy, narrow. Second event when we got to the Grand Prix, it is a street circuit but open, flowing, more than 5Ks, very different nature racetrack. Then we go off to Western Australia, known to be abrasive and difficult and hard on tyres and cars, and we saw them strong. Now we come to Tasmania, another completely different type of racetrack again, and they are well and truly in the game. Chas Mostert in conversation with Adam DeBore. Tom Moore, the engineer there in the foreground, he'll be very pleased with what he's just seen from this guy, and Will congratulates his crew. He rewards them with a brilliant drive today. Brings home 100 points in the process. He's narrowed the margin down to 87 points. And there's the team owner, Betty Clemenko, celebrating. She hasn't been to as many races this year. She likes the cold weather. She's found that this weekend. <laughs> Came into the race with a 101 point margin and he's now got that down to 87. <laughs> Missed the burnout. They could see it from outer space. <laughs> Will Brown, he's in Pertec victory lane. He bags the points today and he's vaulted himself into contention. It's going to be a great battle. Mark Larkham covered this off at the beginning of this race. How long is the bromance going to continue between these guys before ultimately somebody has to win and another has to lose? It's an interesting question, but right now it's time to celebrate. Will is with Jess.
Well, Generation Next has arrived here in the Pertec Victory Lane. Will Brown, congratulations on such a dominant performance this afternoon. I saw you there. Give <laughs> Betty a cuddle, tears in her eyes. What does this one mean to have them here this weekend and to be so dominant? Yeah, it's been awesome uh, to get off the start line then and get the lead and then have the pace we had was awesome. And to have Betty here and Daniel this weekend, it's fantastic to have them back here. Uh, they bring a real atmosphere and it's awesome. So, uh, yeah, I was just excited to be able to do some burnouts. I've got a bit of work to do on them. I didn't even mean to go round, but, uh, no, it was great. Um, a ripper start today. Talk us through it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I just got the... Uh, the initial wasn't too bad, but the secondary phase was really good, and I was able to jump Brody because being second on the outside of there, you can really get uh, sort of, uh, you know, hit off and, uh, and lose a few positions there. So I was really lucky, and then uh, just had a really fast car underneath me. Yeah, were you expecting to have that pace late in the race? No, we actually, Brody had a good idea and a good change uh, for this race, and we did it in both cars, and that's where we were lacking a little bit in that uh, saving the rear tyres, but it was awesome then. Like I said, I didn't expect it to be like that. So, uh, yeah, no, just fantastic. Sitting second in the championship now, how does that feel? Yeah, it's awesome to be sitting second in the championship. Brody's first and the team uh, leading the team's championship. Uh, you know, this, this many rounds in as well, uh, it's, you know, obviously not been a fluke and it's just fantastic. We're stoked and uh, we're just having fun and going racing, so it's been awesome so far. Go and celebrate. Cheers, thank you. And Brock Feeney continues his great run of results on a Sunday. Congratulations to be back up here on the podium. You had great pace out there this afternoon. Talk us through it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, obviously great to be back up on the podium. Got a bit better start in that one, so I moved up. But, um, yeah, certainly burn off my rear tyres, battle and jack then. So we struggled a bit in that first stint. But, yeah, once we put some tyres on at the end, we certainly had some pace. But, yeah, congrats to Will and Brody. They've been doing fantastic in their whole team. But, um, yeah, my team's done awesome this weekend. Yeah, some great exchanges with Jack LeBrock. <laughs> Talk us through them. What was going through your mind as that was all unfolding? Yeah, it was pretty wild. I was watching these guys drive away, so I wanted to try and get through as quick as possible. But um, he's really good at the hairpin, so it made it quite difficult. But, um, yeah, it was pretty wild through here going too wide over the top of the hill. That was that was pretty fun. But um, the mar there's so many marvels. But, uh, no, nah, it's, been, it's been a really solid day. I mean, first and second, shame about yesterday. But overall, I think consistently we've been here more often, so. So it's always good. Finish the round third. Congratulations. Go and enjoy. Thanks very much. Cheers, guys. And Brody Kostecki doing a brilliant job to hang on for a podium this afternoon. Well done. Tell us what was going on in the, the last stanza of that race. We heard you over the radio saying, what is going on with my tyres? I don't have any pace. What happened? Uh, yeah, we're not actually quite short. I know I was slower after the pit stop. So, yeah, it was really confusing for me. Just had no rears and was just trying to look after him and um, was asking George what the gaps were and, yeah, just tried, tried to minimise damage at the end there. And, um, yeah, I thought Shane was going to drive away, but he tried to play a few games and tried to back me up to, into Jack LeBrock. I think he, he was behind me. So, yeah, we had a good little battle there. And, um, yeah, great way to finish off the weekend with a podium. And obviously Will winning as well, which is awesome. He was uh, in another league again, so good on him. He got you at the start. Yeah, he did get me at the start. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually jinxed myself and everyone saw it, so it's all good. What does this one mean to the team to have Betty and Daniel here this weekend to really celebrate in the team's success and consistent success? Yeah, Betty was a bit worried coming here that, you know, she was going to jinx it all. Obviously, we've had some really good form, but, um, you know, with how the weekend's gone so far and, um, you know, obviously I only had one bad race this weekend, but, you know, Will's got two wins this weekend, so it's fantastic to have her and Daniel here and just the vibe's different when she's here, so it's great that, you know, we get moments like these with her. The good news is those orange stickers are going to stay on your car. You've now got an 87-point lead over your teammate who's sitting in second in the championship. Do you start to think about any of that just yet or are you firmly focused on taking it one race at a time? Yeah, I might not call him this week and see how he's going. I might, I might let him sort of zipper for a bit. No, nah, no, nah, it's all good. But, um, yeah, I've got a bit of work to do. He had some really good pace then. So, um, yeah, we'll just go through what we changed for the race and um, see if we can, you know, try and match what he did because he was in, an, in another league that race. So good on to the whole team and uh, just big thank you for everyone coming out as well. Congratulations on a podium this afternoon. Thank you. Chaz Mostert moved up from 11th to 6th in that one. Tell us about your afternoon at the races, Chaz. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Um, like the first race, obviously the car was pretty speedy in race trim, so yeah, a weekend of kind of what could have been, but yeah, obviously we've got some stuff to work on. Um, you know, the, the racing was fun, you know, today. So um, when you can leave the, the motor racing, feel like you had some good battles, um, get some good points, it's, it's what it's all about. But gutted for yesterday, gutted for our qualifying performance, but um, yeah, the racing makes up for it. It looked like in both races today you had very strong pace at the end of the race. So one of the shortcomings, I guess, for your car in the past has been tyre life hasn't been super strong, but you've been encouraged that it looks like you've got strong tyre life now. Yeah, my, my balance becomes a lot better in the race, and, and that's... Um, 
where I can feel like I put the car in better placement to be able to look after it. So we've been making some improvements in that. Um, just this weekend, just qualifying trim to get the most out of it's been really tough. So you know what it's like. You need two cars. You need a qualifying car and a race car. It's nice to know where we have one at the moment. But, yeah, we'll um, work, work pretty hard. I think we might have a test after this, so we'll just have to see what we do. You can leave the beanie at home for the next one. We head up to Darwin, where it's going to be a lot warmer, much different conditions. It's a bit of a happy hunting ground for you as well. You're looking forward to that one? Uh, yeah, I am. I think it'll probably be a little bit more similar to this, even though the temperature will be a lot different. But similar traits, it's a, it's a big straight there at, at Darwin. You need to be strong there. But then there's also a fair bit of aero that comes in it through the back section. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's encouraging having tyre life here. But we'll see if we can um, maximise the next one as well. Thanks, Chaz. We'll see you in the sun. Thanks, GT. have a look at our champ points after our 12th race of the championship season. It's narrowed down now to 87 points between Brody and his teammate Will Brown. And we just heard from Chaz Mostert, who's still in the game. He's been a bit frustrated at times, but he's at the sharp end of the points. He can continue to play it in from here. We're only four events into our 12 events of 2023. Shane Van Gisbergen in the battle today and fighting very hard in the process as well. Our team's championship. Coca-Cola Racing by Erebus continue to impress and excel. 276 points is the margin for that crew, and they're on top of the Red Bull Ampole Racing team. So they look pretty handy out there at the moment, don't they? And it doesn't look as though wherever they go, they're going to be anywhere other than somewhere up near the top of the tree. Supercars.com, jump on our website. Let's have a conversation about the ultimate performer, thanks to BP Ultimate. Well, you'd have to say that this guy could be favourite for that conversation today because Will Brown and everybody at Coca-Cola Racing has done an unbelievably job to be incredibly consistent and fast this weekend. So, with that in mind, let's now turn our attention to the podium for a wonderful celebration. It's time for the podium for race 12 of the Repco Supercars Championship at the Ned Whiskey Tasmania Super Sprint. In third place for Coca-Cola Racing by Erebus, it's Brody Kostecki. In second place for Red Bull Ampole Racing, it's Brock Feeney. From today's winning team, please welcome back Benny Clemenko. And what about the run from this guy, your winner of race number 12? It's Will Brown for Coca-Cola Racing by Erebus. <laughs> Presenting today's third place trophy from Ned Australian Whiskey is Hannah Zuda. Presenting our second place trophy from... Ladies and gentlemen, your race 12, Ned Whiskey. Thereafter, and that was not the start that Cam Waters was looking for. Made his afternoon hard work. Highly congested run in to turn one and two. When they're three wide down here, pretty much equals chaos. And unfortunately, that's what happened for Andre Heimgarten, who got a helping hand, we believe, from Declan Fraser in the process. This location proved to be a popular magnet for trouble and for James Courtney, unfortunately, and Andre Heimgartner, they found themselves in the gravel down there and the umpire decided that both contributed to their own downfall and there was no further case to answer as they wobbled back on. Cold temperatures, but clear, gorgeous skies. Car pace was very good and very consistent, especially for these guys. It's an excellent stop for Will Brown, consolidating a beautiful weekend where he's managed his position on the podium no less than three occasions by the time he got to the end of this one. This livened things up. They decided to undercut the field with car number 97 and Shane Van Gisbergen pitting on lap number 14. But his tyres were pretty sad at the end. There wasn't an awful lot that he could do, but there was a wonderful battle going on between he and Brody Kostecki. They were both giving it backwards and forwards to each other. In the end, Brody was able to get back again. There was a question mark over his performance. He thinks it might have been the tyres and in the incoming set. But either way, he was able to get himself back on the podium. A nice dive by Shane Van Gisbergen. Meantime, while all this was going on, Will Brown was disappearing up the road. He ended up crossing the line with a hefty margin in hand and a grin from ear to ear. And that is one very happy crew from Coca-Cola Racing by Erebus. So they set themselves up perfectly as we now head towards the sunshine in several weeks as we head off to Darwin. 
Tim Slade, new on racing, qualified for this last race of the day in position five, but your car was sounding pretty sick, unfortunately, towards the end of it. What happened there? Yeah, I think it sounded more like it belonged out in one of the uh, the paddocks beside the track. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly. Um, it was running strong, and then after the stop, um, it was a little bit slippery in the rear. I noticed, you know, a couple of spots of, of water coolant, whatever, up on the windscreen, and, um, yeah, kind of feared the worst straight away, and then it just got worse and worse. So, yeah, failure of some sort, uh, engine-wise. Just give us a bit of a summary of your weekend overall. Sort of sitting around the 10 for pretty much most sessions. Is good, good outcome? Yeah, I mean, we, we probably lacked a little bit um, outright speed-wise the first day, but then um, race car was, was relatively strong. You know, the team as a whole did a, an awesome job. Um, pit stop, strategy, whatever else. So I feel as though we, we maximised this weekend. Um, today, yeah, the, the car was, was good. We just sort of kept on chipping away at it. Didn't really throw too much at it. Um, and it was the best that it was in the last race. So disappointing, but uh, yeah, it's racing. Head to Darwin next. What are you anticipating is going to come out of that weekend? Uh, probably the opposite temperature <laughs> to, to, to here. Um, yeah, it, it's always um, a really enjoyable weekend up north. Um, Peter's got the uh, the drag car there as well, so that'll be pretty cool to, to watch at night. But, um, yeah, just, just more of the same, really. Just, you know, like I said, pre-race, you know, just want to, I guess, build that sort of solid foundation and, and you know, keep on building from that. So, uh, yeah, head head down, bum up, and uh, keep on trying to move forwards. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Rihanna. <laughs>